Please stand. Good morning and welcome to St. Pius X Catholic Church here in Moberly as we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. As he prepared the way for Jesus Christ, let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries that we will share. We begin with the sign of salvation in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, Bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for today's first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, though whom I show my glory. Through, though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. O oh Lord, you have probed me, you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize with all my ways, you are familiar. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. My soul also you knew full well nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth, I praise you for I am wonderfully made. Okay. The second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, 
God raised up David as king of him, God testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing to us, this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished to call him. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue freed, and he spoke the blessings of God. Then fear came upon their na- all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed through the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Well, today we interrupt the teaching of the kingdom of God in order to celebrate the birthday of John the Baptist. Now, in this reading, it can be a little misleading because part of the way through, about halfway down, we hear that his father, Zechariah, has to use a tablet to say what name they were going to give this child. The reason for that was Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth, were very old when the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah, a priest, and said that they would be with child. Well, Zechariah didn't believe him, and for that, he was struck mute. That's why he took the tablet out to write the name down, John. And as our reading says, normally they would go through the family name. They chose John. And as soon as Zechariah typed or scrolled into the tablet the name John, he got his voice back. And of course, I am sure that in that time, his rejoicing would have been just like our rejoicing when a child is born. He would have been shouting from the rooftops how proud he was of his son. But his son, a very special individual indeed, because he came to prepare for the Lord, to prepare the way. He was not anybody special in his own eyes, that being John the Baptist. He was just another man sent to do the work that the Lord asked him to do. And that's the work that the Lord sends us to do on this day we celebrate John the Baptist. Not the work of John the Baptist, but the work the Lord has asked us to do. And no, we aren't even worthy to 
undo John the Baptist's sandals. But we are worthy to do the work that the Lord has asked us to do. And what is that? Well, we're disciples of the Lord. We need to go out and spread the word. But how many of us actually have a job within the church? How many of us take our job within the church seriously? Now, Mary did a, a wonderful job reading today. And in those readings led up to this gospel, the light that John the Baptist would be. What about the light that you are and you are to be? There's a lot of work left to do in this crazy world that we live in. And the Lord is asking us to do that work. But what is that work? The work of the Lord. We need to be his hands and feet. We need to go out and we need to preach the gospel. But as we've read in the last couple of days, we don't need to stand on a street corner and wave our hands back and forth and shout to the rooftops. No, we just need to quietly go out and do the work. And again, what is that work that we need to do? That's between you and God. He directs us each and every day, but how many times do we just step aside and say, I got this. I know I'm very, very, very much one of those individuals that thinks I'm running the ship, and I'm not. I need to rely more on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to guide me. And I'm sure you could be in that very same boat. Just like Zechariah and Elizabeth, they allowed God to guide them, and look what they got. They prayed their entire lives for a child, and it wasn't until they were old they got what they asked for. And again, you hear us say it time and time again, Lord, we ask you to hear these prayers, not in our time, but in yours. And that's exactly what we need to continue to remember. That even a priest like Zechariah and his devout wife, Elizabeth, who spent all this time wanting a child, boy, did they ever get a special child indeed. But it was in the Lord's time. John the Baptist came and made the way for Jesus Christ. He said that he was not even worthy to loosen the sandals of the man, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. And neither are we. But we're not asked to do the things that John the Baptist did. Like I've been saying, we're asked to do what we need to do. Whether that's doing the dishes maybe after a funeral meal or bringing a dish for a funeral meal or maybe just cleaning up the grounds around the church or maybe being a Martha and helping clean here in the church. Maybe it's taking a, a dinner to somebody that can't cook for themselves. Maybe it's helping prison ministry, hospital ministry. There's so many things that we can do that we think, I can't do that. But with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you better believe we can do it. Deacon John Hill, myself, we're living proof. We've been to the prison. We know what it's like. But you know what? Those humans are just as much human as we are. Those men and women that we visit, they would love to be in this very church just as much as you and I love to be in this very church. They would love to be able to do the things that we do, the things that we take for granted. Please don't ever take anything for granted that the Lord has given you. And know that as we go on in our lives, whatever the discipleship it is that ours is looks like, it's what the Lord is asking us to do. Take that and run with it. Do his work. And we will be a much, much happier people, not only here in Randolph County, but if everyone around the world would do that, we would be a much happier, peaceful nation. Please stand. Let us offer our prayers of petition to our gracious and merciful God. 
that the church may grow in perfection and love for God through the Holy Spirit's gift of piety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may be guided by God, who alone is just and merciful, and serving those who elected them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in doubt and despair may be relieved of their burdens through the gracious mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That God may strengthen each one of us in our faith as we seek to live out our vocation as disciples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who have died may find peace with God at the eternal banquet in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord God, listen to the prayers of your people and answer them in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel or be seated. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Lord, we, renew, we are renewed by the breaking of one bread. Keep us in your love and help us live a new life. Christ won for us. Grant this in the name of our Lord and 
this evening.